My husband, Peter, is at war with a hummingbird. I try to explain to him the essential unfairness of this. The hummingbird has a brain smaller than the end of Peter's finger. This is a battle of wits, Peter announced. I knew my money should be with Peter, but I had my doubts. This particular hummingbird incurred Peter's wrath when it chased away all the smaller, less aggressive hummingbirds, leaving only this one brightly colored bully at the feeder. I suggested to Peter that he might be getting a little too emotionally involved. But Peter has a story to accompany every animal we encounter, including the now banished hummingbirds, and all these stories are, coincidentally, tragic. Did you see that coyote who's always by himself? Peter asked me one morning. The coyotes are moving closer into town, and it is no longer remarkable to see one strolling down the sidewalk. His tail has almost no fur. Peter waited for me to recognize the significance of this. When I did not immediately reply, he continued, He has been rejected by his pack. Now he is wandering alone, trying again and again to rejoin his pack, and each time getting beaten up and rejected again. Maybe he just likes being alone, I countered. Maybe he's a lone coyote. Peter doesn't believe me. But no animal inspires more sad narrative than the raven. Ravens mate for life. We see two ravens or six or eight, but never an odd number of ravens. They are always together, always watching out for their mate. Watch out! They're always telling one another, careful, there's a dog coming. Their devotion is romantic, but the raven is not a romantic creature. They are ungainly and bossy and opportunistic. On garbage day, they look for garbage cans with the lids left accidentally open. <sighs> such a foolish thing to do, such fun. Even when they're not fighting over trash, they're noisy they make low, raspy noises that sound like a wooden stick running along the rungs of a banister. Sometimes they just sit in a tree and say, Brock, over and over again. He has lost his mate, Peter said to me one day when he heard this. His heart is broken. Oh, that raven is just fine, I responded testily. That is the sound they make when they are in mourning. His mate is dead, Peter insisted. Oh, it's a love song, I told him. That raven is singing to his mate. It is their anniversary, and he's singing, Brock, I love you. Brock, you are lovely. Brock, you are as lovely as the day we met over a garbage can three years ago. Peter is unconvinced. Peter and I are not the most sophisticated couple you'll ever meet. In fact, we are very much like those noisy, clumsy birds who hop around the garbage cans together and sit together side by side in the trees. We are almost always together and when we're apart, we're always checking on one another, concerned about the other's whereabouts until we are reunited. In the evenings, we sit together on the patio when the sun is setting and the clouds are huge plumes of pink and blue, and we watch the ravens who somehow manage to get into the air after a day of foraging for garbage. Once they are in the air, 
They look like a different bird entirely. They float in the rising air. They soar in the light of the setting sun. The two of them together. You are my raven, I tell Peter. Peter smiles. Till next time, Carrie.